Okay, so let's say that we've been tasked with setting up interfaces F0 slash 2 through 13 with um, a host port configuration on VLAN uh, 666, the VLAN of the beast. So let's go ahead and in configuration mode, we're going to go into interface range and we're going to start with F0 slash 2 and we're going to go through 13. So like I said, I'm not going to go too deep into the interface range command, but basically what it does is it allows you to apply the same configuration to multiple interfaces at once. In this case, we're doing F0 slash 2 through 13. I don't want to get too deep into this, but on your specific platform, there may be some goofiness with it. Some of them you have to have this space between the hyphen and some of them you don't. You can also use commas, but again, Consult the lesson on interface range for more details on that. So now you can see we are in interface range configuration and I'm going to issue switch port host. And what that does is it runs a macro that's going to apply some basic best practice configuration for host ports. It's going to turn on um, spanning tree port fast and it's going to make this a host access port. So then the next step is that we want to assign these ports to VLAN 666. So it's switch port access VLAN. 666 and you'll notice here that when you assign a VLAN that has not been created yet it goes ahead and creates that for you. I want you to take note of that because that is going to come back a little bit later. Let's just throw on a description. This is a port. Hit enter and now we should be able to exit out of interface range and if I do a show run and I'll begin with interface F0 slash 1. We can see here that that still has the configuration that we had on there before and that's our uplink and now starting with F0 slash 2 we can see that it's applied the configuration changes that we made. So so we've got the description, we've got the port assigned to VLAN 666, and then we have switch port mode access and spanning tree port fast. Those are both applied by that switch port host command. And if I just keep in my spacebar, next time I hit spacebar, it should show that starting with port F0 slash 14, it's the default configuration rather than the configuration that we threw on these guys. And it is. Booyah. Well, that's great, but this is not a lesson about the interface range command. What I'm going to show you now is that you can combine the power of both of these iOS commands together for some very cool interface defaulting action. All right, so let's say that you get the word from on high that, no, we're not going to go with this configuration. I need you to go ahead and take all that configuration off of those ports. Now, this is a 48-port switch. It could be in a 3750 switch deck with, you know, 200-some ports that you applied this to. So now you're looking at, oh, my God, I got to go through, and I know how to harness the power of the amazing default interface interface command, but I don't want to have to issue that command, you know, in this case, what, 12 times, in extreme cases, a couple hundred times. Well, the good news is that you can combine these commands. So if we go and we issue our default interface and invoke the Cisco iOS help, we should see here at the bottom, where am I? Range right there. Booyah. So we can use the range command. So we can go ahead and reverse out everything that we just did by using the interface range command. So what I'm saying here is I want to default the interfaces from F0 slash 2 through F0 slash 13. Those were the ports that we had just configured. If I hit enter here. It doesn't give you a lot of feedback. But now I should be able to up arrow and find this guy. If we take a look at our running configuration, we can see that we did not change anything on port F0 slash 1. And our ports 2 through whoops 2 through 13 are back to their defaults now so this is very cool it's it's really nice to use with cisco switches because you can quickly set multiple interfaces back to their default configuration with one command that's very cool when we configured these interfaces there was a vlan that was created that was vlan 666 now when you default these you might think well you know i defaulted all these so i don't have any reference to vlan 666 under any of the interfaces now but if i do a show vlan brief this guy's still active so while the default interface command is going to do exactly what it says default your interfaces there may be some configuration that was created when you were configuring these interfaces like in this case it went ahead and created that vlan that will not be removed it's not going to go in and say oh you know what you don't need that vlan anymore because you're not referencing that under any ports anytime you do this type of stuff go back through your configuration make sure you didn't miss anything so we could get rid of vlan 666 with the tried and true no vlan 666 command but let's go ahead and give the uh, default command a shot here so if i go default vlan 666 well, what do you think is going to happen huh? no fireworks let's go ahead and reissue our vlan command booyah so it's gone 
So you can actually use this in lieu of the no. In this case, it's not that big a deal. You're actually entering more characters than normal, but it's kind of interesting to know that that's there. All right, so that's the default interface command. I love this command. I especially love it when combined with the interface range command on Cisco switches because you can go in and get a lot of work done with a single command. It's going to save you a lot of time over, you know, going through and line by line, getting rid of your configuration. You can just go in there and use one line and completely default an interface. Again, do make sure to go back after you default the interface. Take a look at the interface configuration. Make sure it is what you want it to be. As we showed on that router, it didn't shut down the interface. It, it defaulted everything, but it was still open so that, you know, it wasn't in a shutdown mode. So somebody could connect a connection to it and you don't want that. You want to have any ports you're not using be explicitly shut down. Uh, I'll say it one more time. I really love this with the interface range command on Cisco switches and definitely check that out the next time you have to go in and default the number of switch ports on a Cisco switch. So thanks once again for joining me in the Packet Lab today and as always I hope this helps you on your route to becoming a network god.